sacrifice I've not joined with my life I sing in vain tonight May the words I Our 
blessed Redeemer With a glad shout I'll leave the ground When I wake up When I wake up To sleep no more When I wake up Some glad morning To sleep no more Jewels adorning Happy happy Over in glory Heaven's bright show Telling the story With the reading of all the ages Praising the one whom I adore Good evening. It's good to see everybody here tonight for the uh, midweek service. Uh, we continue to pray for Ray and the Sugar. They're, I guess, traveling home by now. Uh, been gone for a few days. He asked me the other day would I fill in for him, and I told him I would. I've had two people and not asked me was I going to preach. I said, no, I don't preach. I don't, I'm not a preacher, but I'll do my best to stand up here and uh, give us something that I believe that God would have us to hear. <clears throat> Before we get started tonight, are they, uh, anybody we need to remember in prayer tonight? I don't have the prayer list with me, so. Wayne Poole. Wayne Poole. Wayne Poole, okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Anybody else? Daryl Corson. Okay. Anyone else? <coughs> of course, we still need to continue to remember our our country, and our leadership, and we need to uh, pray for those that's in the leadership positions that they would. Seek God, try to make the right decisions. And it just doesn't seem like that's happening in today's world, but, but we need to do that. Anyone else before we get started? <clears throat> Nobody else? All right. Let's... Uh, Mike Cruz, would you start us on word prayer, please?
Amen. All right, I have uh, uh, Brother Mac, you can relate to what I'm fixing to say because I have struggled ever since Ray asked me to fill in for him tonight. And God didn't give me anything. You ever been like that? We're just, oh, come on, Lord, you, you, you got to come through. But yesterday afternoon, I got a text message from one of my coworkers that goes to church there at Swamp Road. I said, that's it right there. <clears throat> uh, I'm not saying God's in a text message, but I don't know. He sent this to me, and it fits today's time. Now, this is not necessarily a biblical thing that I'm going to do tonight. Uh, I, I do have a little bit out of the Bible I'm going to read. I'm not going to be up for but a few minutes because we got somebody coming tonight that's going to give their testimony for the first time. So y'all be praying for him as he comes and does that. <clears throat> but what I want to read to you tonight is an obituary. This was written in 2015, a long time before the pandemic hit. <clears throat> Let's see if I can read it. Obituary. And, and this person here, or the, we all know, everybody in the world knows or did in the past. The sad passing of common sense. Some of y'all may have read this before. I hadn't read it till, the, till yesterday. Today we mourn the passing of a beloved old friend, common sense, who has been with us for many years. No one knows for sure how old he was since his birth records were long ago lost in bureaucratic red tape. <clears throat> he will be remem remembered as having cultivated such valuable lessons as knowing when to come in out of the rain, why the early bird gets the worm, life isn't always fair, and maybe it was my fault. Common sense lived by simple, Sound financial policies. Don't spend more than you earn. <clears throat> uh, and reliable parenting. Adults, not children, are in charge. <clears throat> His health began to deteriorate rapidly when well-intentioned but overbearing regulations were set in place. Reports of a six-year-old boy charged with sexual harassment for kissing a classmate in class. Teenagers suspended from school for using mouthwash after lunch. A teacher fired for reprimanding an unruly student. Only to worsen his condition, common sense lost ground when parents attacked teachers for doing the job that they had themselves had failed to do and disciplined their own unruly children. His health declined even further when schools were required to get parental consent to administer Tylenol or suntan lotion. <clears throat> but could not inform the parents when a pupil became pregnant and wanted an abortion. Common sense lost the will to live as the Ten Commandments became contraband, churches became businesses, criminals received better treatment than their victims. Common sense took a beating when you couldn't defend yourself from a burglar in your own home, but that same burglar could sue you for assault because you tried to protect yourself and your family. Common sense finally gave up the will to live after a woman failed to realize that a steaming cup of coffee was hot, she spilled some in her lap and was promptly awarded a huge settlement. Common sense was preceded in death by his parents, truth and trust, his wife, discretion, his daughter, responsibility, and his son, reason. He is survived by three stepbrothers. I know my rights. Someone else is to blame, and I'm a victim. Not many attended his funeral because so few realized that he was gone. If you still remember him, pass this on. If not, join the majority and don't do anything.
that was just so profound to me. Uh, written some years ago that the world we live in has lost all common sense. Ethan, when you, when, you, when you have to have a label on a blender that says, do not put your hands in the blender while it's turned on. <laughs> I mean, hello. That's com you know, where's common sense at? So what does the world say about common? I mean, what does the Bible say about common sense? Does it even address it? You know, it wasn't, in Jesus' day, it wasn't common sense to follow him. He was, uh, he came into the world and disrupted everything that uh, the Jews had set up. Uh, we can't say that it was common sense. It's, uh, it's not common sense to the world to follow a leader you can't see, that you've never seen, but yet we trust him anyway. And I thought about this yesterday afternoon and last night and today, but God's word has provided us with a whole book in this Bible about common sense. It's called Proverbs. Read it. Uh, my wife was just reading it. She read me some the other night, Tiny. And I hadn't been long, just a few months ago, finished reading it. <clears throat> and uh, it's just a common sense approach to the world. And I'm going to read a few of them. Some of them we know. Some of them we've never heard of. Some of them. There was uh, one that I, I read it, but I couldn't find it today. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paraphrase it. It says that... Uh, it's better for a man to live alone in the desert than in the house with a contentious wife. That's common sense, guys. <laughs> All day long. That's common sense. <laughs> uh, uh, this is, and I'm going to skip around in Proverbs. Uh, uh, These things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that will be swift to running the mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, he that soweth discord among the brethren. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. I've got several highlighted. I just want to read them. <clears throat> How about this one? He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. <clears throat> this is one I like here. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Train up a child in the way he shall go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Withhold not correction from the child, for if you beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shall deliver his soul from hell. Now you tell me that's common sense in today's world.
Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Remove far from me vanity and lies, and give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee, and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and still and take in the name of thy God in vain. And it goes on and on if, you, if you've ever read the book of Proverbs. If you haven't, I challenge you to do that. Uh, verse or two a night or chapter two a night. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a common sense approach to this world we live in today where it seems like all common sense is out the door. It's just, you know, I just constantly shake my head at the things that's going on around us that just doesn't make any sense to us as Christians. Uh, that's all I've got. I'm going to give this, this next fella all the time he needs. He's uh, Coach Carter, if you'll come. <coughs> My throat's about gone anyway. And he'll be praying for well, the Carters. He comes and gives his testimony. <coughs> Some people say I don't need a microphone. I'm loud enough without one. Um, pray for me as I go through this, guys. I'm nervous. I teach for a living, and I'm nervous in front of a crowd. How does that make sense? But what in life really does? <clears throat> I wrote this about a year ago. Um, I put it on Facebook. Some of you may have read it. <clears throat> it says, in a world of negativity, let me tell you what this pandemic has done for me. It, I felt compelled to share this story today. Someone may need to hear it. I was saved when I was in sixth grade, 1974. Some of y'all weren't even born. Kind of old, but uh, I was never strong in my faith, and I soon fell into the ways of the world. I've done many things that I'm not proud of. I followed the ways of the world, was caught up in worldly things. I allowed Satan to pull me away from my faith. This was no, through no, fault, no one's fault but my own. No excuses. It was me. Looking back, God never gave up on me. He was always close. He would nudge me from time to time. And push me back onto the path I needed to be on. Being a hard-headed individual that I am, I would only listen until things got better. I never allowed him full control of my life. I questioned my faith. I began to pray a few years ago, every day on the way to work. My heart began to change. I still wasn't reading his word like I needed to. I wasn't attending church. I would not attended church regularly since I was a child. The pandemic came along. I started to see some preaching online, and it helped. Several preachers that I've known for some time spoke, and the words started to reach me. I began to read the Bible daily. I prayed at least once a day, if not several times a day. One, day, one pastor in particular, Brother Ray, I was drawn to his daily ministry. Oak Hill Baptist Church started to drive in service, and the Lord pushed me to come. The best thing is I listened. That's hard for me. I've always been a take control kind of guy. I've always wanted to do it on my own. And it was hard to listen and to give him control. But when I listened, it changed my life. It changed all aspects of my life. I had been saved, but I've never been baptized. I was baptized May 24th of 2020. There was another lady in here that was baptized the same day. I don't see her right now. There she is. I'm proud of you, sister. There are a great group of godly people here at this church. 
I'm so blessed to be part of it. Do I struggle? Daily. Am I a sinner? I will be till the day I die. Do I fear death? No, because I know there's something better waiting on me on the other side. I am a child of God. He is now in control of my life. And as long as I don't mess it up, I have joy and peace the rest of my days. I read God's word daily. I pray daily. And it's created so many blessings for me. This is my testimony. What's yours? Is God pushing you to be in a church? And I put this online because I wanted to welcome people here. If so, we'd welcome you here at Oak Hill. But if it's not at only church that I've learned, it's not, well, I said that wrong. I apologize. But it's not only the church. I've learned that not, it's not which church or which preacher. You need to be in a church for guidance and support. It's about your walk with God. Are you a child of the king? If not, do you want to be? I promise it's life altering. Thank you. I told Brother Larry the next time he does that, it'll be easier. <laughs> it will. It gets a little easier along, along and along. I'm wondering tonight if uh, anyone else would like to stand up and give a testimony or maybe what God's done in their life. We've got time. We're going to finish early. Uh, I'm not certainly not going to. Now, I, I pushed Larry into it. He's trying to back out on me earlier, and I, I wouldn't let him. So I, uh, he had it wrote down. I've been wanting to do it for a while, but uh, sometimes we have to get pushed into things that, that scare us. But I can promise you there's nobody in this building any more scared of getting up here than me. I was an introvert all my life. I got scared in a room of two people and couldn't speak a word. God will get you through it every time. I promise you he will. Anybody want to get up and say a word? Miss Gail. Amen. There's kids that I don't know a lot about the church, 
I'd like to issue a challenge to you uh, about your testimony. Write it down, like Larry did. Just write it down and rewrite it. Keep changing it. Just read it to yourself. Keep it in your Bible and pull it out. All, I, I had a, an old deacon that I come up under at Mount Calvary, with Richard Jackson. He, uh, he asked me after I had been going to church for just several months or less than a year, want me to go out on visitation with him on Tuesday night. And I told him, I said, I just, I don't think I could. I don't have anything to say. I'd be too too afraid. And and he, I remember he pointed that big old long finger at me and he said, Ronnie, you need to know something. You are a witness. It's up to you if you're going to be a good one or a bad one. I've never forgot what he told me, Robert. Never. So it's up to each one of them. I'm not saying we all got to come up here and, and give our testimony out in public, but at the very least, live it in front of a lost and dying world. Just live it like you mean it every day. Every day. Anything else? Anybody got need an opportunity? <clears throat> All right. If y'all will stand, we'll be dismissed. <clears throat> Dear, kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we're just so grateful today and so mindful of your many blessings, the many things in life that you give us that we just so take for granted, Lord. Uh, this wonderful place we have, we can come and worship and comfort in the coolness of the day. We don't have to fight just to get in the door. Lord, we just thank you for every opportunity that you give us to be that witness we need to be. And my prayer is that we would do that, that we would work daily to strengthen our witness and to strengthen our testimony in front of a lost and dying world. We pray for those that surround us that are sick and hurting. that are not here. We pray for traveling mercies. For Brother Ray and Ms. Shug as they come and traveling back home. Uh, and Lord, whatever we say here, whatever we do here, whatever we accomplish in this place, we just want to honor you and glorify your name through it all in Christ's name. Amen.